Hey, welcome back to A Faster Me. This is the world famous Montrose ride, <laughs> but I'm doing the not so world famous 745 instead of the eight o'clock. So anyway, this is just one of the popular and well-known Southern California group rides. If you're not familiar with the Montrose ride or, you know, Southern California group rides. Anyway, before we get started, um, if you like my videos or enjoy the videos, or if you like my wife's videos, enjoy those, please hit that like and subscribe button. Um, I don't know, I, just this year I decided, hey, let's make a little push, try to get to at least 1,000 subscribers. I thought that was what I needed for to do live, um, live streams. Um, turns out somebody told me I don't need that. But you know what, that's what was in my head, so let's push for that 1,000 number anyway. I know it's the number you need for monetization, but honestly, I don't get enough views to like make money on YouTube or anything like that. And I'm not really trying to be too entertaining either. I just like the raw aspects of cycling. I love showing people exactly what it is. Um, I do try to grow the sport, get people into cycling. I actually keep a kind of cheap uh, specialized delay. I wouldn't say cheap, it's a good bike. It's just an older bike. Um, and I use that to let people borrow and get them into cycling. People that are kind of interested but don't want to spend the money, I let them borrow it usually for a couple of weeks to a month and you know, see if they like it enough to invest. A lot of them talk about racing and just competing. So also, you know, as you guys probably already know, I coach as well. I'm a certified um, USA Cycling Level 3 coach. Been coaching for a few years. Um, and yeah, I do coach a number of racers as well. Um, most of them are either cat four, five, and cat three as well. I do have some race winners that I coach also, but um, you know, I'm not trying to kind of, you know, um, what's it called? I'm not trying to really call out people or say that anybody wins a race because of my coaching or because of my training. Um, obviously, if you win a race, that means you're talented. Um, you're a good athlete first, no matter who's coaching you. And then sometimes a coach can just put you on the right track, um, kind of maximize your training, stuff like that, and uh, just give you that little bit of boost that you may need or a little bit of guidance that you may need. And also with that being said, uh, every coach-athlete relationship is an experiment. I know some people think like, this person's a great coach and if I get with them, they're gonna be good. Or some people think like, oh, I coached with someone and I didn't like them. They're not a good coach. Neither one of those are really true. It's really, you know, you got to find that right combination. And that can be anyone. It can be from an ex-world tour rider that you don't click with or you do click with. Um, and obviously that person, uh, you know, kind of knows the industry, but it doesn't make them a good coach. And also, if, you, uh, if they are a good coach, and it doesn't work out for you doesn't mean that you're a crappy athlete either just means that it may not be a good combination so just keep that in mind that every coach athlete relationship is an experiment so anyway uh back to the montrose ride this is actually the 745 um i'll probably bump up to eight when i need like a lot more intensity but i gotta just get myself in shape first and not only that i ride with my team which is uh paa pasadena athletic association I'm the race director of uh, PAA. I was the race captain. Um, our director resigned and I kind of moved over uh, to that role. And now Marlena Bemis is our captain. And yeah, so we, we, we uh, have a lot of new riders, new racers. And, you know, honestly, it's a little bit more work or better work in the 745 than people just getting in the eight o'clock and trying to hang on for dear life or getting dropped early. And then you're riding solo. So. You know, don't don't let your ego get in the way of what time you ride. Just get in there and uh, use the group ride for your benefit. And, you know, if that's like uh, try, trying breakaways, uh, working on your repeat efforts or just holding a wheel, whatever it is, use the use the ride for your benefit and try not to get too caught up in what other people uh, think or what other people's objectives are um, anyway. So with that being said, I have a few teammates in the ride with me. Uh, I think Joe Garcia, I got Stephanie um, Bruner. I, I forgot Stephanie's last name, honestly. Sorry, Stephanie. Um, we got Billy, uh, Jack O, myself, my wife, Ellen. Um, 
hopefully I'm not forgetting anybody. So that's Joe actually in front of me on the pink SL7. Um, hopefully I can get Joe back out, uh, you know, back in the races again. And, you know, maybe we're gonna, I think he's interested in, you know, riding up to Berkeley and doing that Omnium. So maybe we can do that later in the year. So anyway, this is a big segment here. This is Hammer Alley. Uh, it's Valley Center basically. And uh, we kind of hit it at a fairly chill pace today. You know, um, when you're in the eight o'clock, you're gonna be hitting this well over, you know, 25 miles per hour or so. It's just about a, I think this one's a, you know, almost half a mile effort, four tenths of a mile or so. And uh, it's only a two minute effort for me at least, a uh, little over two minutes. And usually it's somewhere between three and 400 watt average effort. So it's a good little effort. Um, the pace is pretty good. And this is one of the separators. So this is one of the opportunities for the, the group to separate itself. Um, anytime the road goes up, there's an opportunity for separation. And it's very critical to stay in the draft, even on the climbs, you know, 18 miles per hour, you're still getting a significant draft. Um, and you're getting that, uh, you know, that effort, that benefit um, from how many watts you have to do to maintain this same speed. As you can see, we're doing over 3% and, you know, 300 watts, 340 watts, stuff like that, and 19 miles per hour. So if I was to do this by myself, those same watch would probably have me at about 16, 17 miles per hour. So just that's the significance of staying with the group. And basically for this uh, video, I'm gonna show the second half of Montrose, kind of like, it's actually kind of like the middle of Montrose um, after the cutoff, which is um, when we turned right on Gladstone. I didn't show the kitchen. Um, I don't know why I just didn't show the kitchen, but so this segments are gonna be Amelia, uh, which I've already shown. And then here, which is Hammer Alley. And then uh, the wall climb and all the way through the Winston climb when we turn left back onto Foothill. So again, this was Hammer Alley. Um, when you turn left here, you've, you've usually put in a pretty good effort, you know, if you stay with the group here. But once you turn left, just be cautious because that effort is not over. The road kind of goes downhill and gets fast. And like myself here, putting my head down, I kind of want a little break, but you really can't afford to take a true break here or you'll be dropped. Um, luckily, with the group's not going that fast and I'm able to just jump onto somebody's wheel here. But if you get separated from the group here, it's pretty much hasta la vista because it's a nice little fast downhill. And by the time you catch up right before the wall, it's going to be another hard effort going up the wall again. So, yeah. So for those of you that don't know, the Montrose Rise starts off at Trader Joe's in South Pasadena. Um, there's three different start times. You got the 7:30 start time. Um, all of them start at Trader Joe's, and there's two routes at every time. So there's basically six rides basically every Saturday, um, and they go every Saturday rain, sleep, snow, it doesn't matter. The ride is on, someone will be there. Um, so at 7.30, starts at Trader Joe's. The rides leave sharp at 7.30, 7.45 and eight o'clock. Um, there's no waiting around for anyone or anything like that. It's when that time hits, the group takes off. 7.30 is kind of the smallest group. Uh, usually there's still about 40 riders, 30 to 50 riders in the 7.30 group. Um, even now in the winter, it's still pretty decent showing. I think there was about 40 riders uh, earlier today when I got there. I saw the 7.30 leaving. But every group or every start time has two rides. You have Montrose Long and Montrose Short. And I think the road is Cerritos that it splits on. If you're going short, you keep going up Cerritos back, um, back to Alasta or Foothill, whatever that is, and make the left. If you're going long, you turn right on Gladstone and proceed towards the climbing sections of the road, which starts off with the kitchen. So 7.45 is the exact same, eight o'clock is the exact same. The only thing different is the size of the group and the speed increases the later it gets. Um, way back in the day or whatever, I believe there used to be four rides, 7.30, 7.45, eight o'clock and 8.30. Um, but pretty much the 8.30 and the 8 o'clock kind of merged 
and then some of the guys from the eight o'clock bounce down to the 745 and now you have you know two decently fast groups but the eight o'clock is where it gets brutally fast and sometimes you're just trying to hang on so yeah we got a couple more maybe a little half a mile here before we hit the next hard segment and it's only a 0.2 mile climb called the wall the wall hits about 10 percent, i believe um could be mistaken but i believe it's about 10 percent um and there's a there's kind of two different climbs honestly um if you catch the green light it's a really fast sprint that's all it is a really fast 0.2 of a mile sprint and if you catch a red light then it becomes a 0.2 of a mile power climb uh, both of them are kind of power climbs just one's a power sprint and the other one ends up being a power climb just because you have no min momentum when you hit the bottom of the hill today unfortunately we don't catch the light and it's a slow power climb and i didn't feel like giving the effort that's just <laughs> that's not something i enjoy that little start from a track stand basically and power climb for two tenths of a mile so i just kind of chill at a normal pace and it ends up getting me semi dropped to where i have to chase back onto the group so again that's my teammate joe right there to the left pink sl7 um just a shout out um but yeah the mancho's ride if you're not familiar with it has a lot of clubs that come up that show up to the ride has a lot of race teams in the ride um most people race or used to race that does montrose it's not really like a beginner ride for the most part um obviously beginners are welcome but if you're really new to riding a bike or group rides i would suggest start off in the 730 um, it's no big deal just start off in the 730 if it's too slow or too easy for you move up to the 745 evaluate it again if that's too slow or too easy move up to eight o'clock um, yeah so anyway as you can see that big wall in front of us that's why it's called the wall uh it gets pretty steep and since we end up catching the light here yeah that kind of blows the fun out of this <laughs> out of this little climb um for guys like me at least or riders like me um yeah i like to hit it with some momentum it hurts when you don't so again here um i just kind of chill I end up actually going into my small ring here and just kind of do a little standing effort and just power up the climb. But like I said, with guys accelerating like halfway up, uh, that catches me out. And I wasn't I was being lazy, didn't want to do the effort. And I get semi dropped and then have to chase the group again, have to chase back on. And that's just the price you pay. If you don't want to put the effort in now, um, you got to pay it later and chase back on. There's Jack right there on the left, just practicing his attacks. He didn't sprints. He's been doing it all, all, uh, all right. And he does it all the time. Honestly, he's a very punchy rider. And when you are a punchy rider, yeah, you got to play to your strengths. So you got to use segments like this or sections like this to, uh, develop that skill and just to, uh, kind of fine tune it for races. Jack returned to racing after like 14 years off. Um, he took so much time off that he was back to a cat five again and he won the opening race of the season at cbr last week in the cat five and i think he put in the upgrade to move back up to cat four and you know see how the season goes and maybe later in the season he'll move up again so yeah um I'm definitely regretting my little decision here now not to accelerate because honestly when you go slower okay you're doing like 50 to 100 watts less but you're doing it for 10 15 seconds longer now instead of just going a little harder getting the segment over and you know staying attached to the group so not only did I still suffer by you know doing a little bit less watts for a longer period of time I now have to chase back onto the group or end up having a lonely solo ride. And I'm not last or anything. There's still people behind us. Um, you know, I was kind of near the front of the group in like the first 15 riders or so. Um, but yeah, it gets lonely. And not only that, you're gonna be putting in the same effort with no draft or anything, going a lot slower for the last like 
eight to ten miles of this ride if you don't attach back to the group. So again, I'm putting in 246 watts. Doesn't seem like a lot to some people, but to me, that's threshold. Um, you know, I have a decent sprint at about 1200 watts, but I have no sustained power at all. You know, 240-ish is about my threshold right now. And, you know, we've already been riding 35 miles or so, uh, maybe even 40 by now, uh, probably about 35. Um, so yeah. 35 miles in, a threshold effort. They don't come that easy at this point of the, of the year for me. I'm just not in good shape. Um, but that's the price you pay. I should have put in that little effort just to stay attached to the group. Don't have to sprint or anything, but I should have just stayed attached. And now I got to chase. These are some fun little segments, you know, these little roundabouts in here. There's pretty much two of them, but you hit them pretty fast. The entire route is actually pretty good. I think overall, if you go from Trader Joe's all the way back to the Trader Joe's, you know, it's about a 50 something mile round trip. But from Trader Joe's to Sierra Madre, um, you know, it's a 45 mile road race, basically, with rolling terrain. If you go long, if you go short, you know, there's just not as much climbing. I think the only climb if you go short is Winston and then back to Sierra Madre. Um, so you add about a thousand feet of climbing if you go long. And it's just a good competitive ride um, that kind of simulates a road race. Montrose is a, is a drop ride though. There's no regrouping or anything like that. Um, it's just every man for themselves. So if you flat or anything else, yeah, you're on your own. So just know that don't, so just at least download the route if you come out for the first time or come with someone that knows the route. Um, there is no stopping, you know, for the most part. Someone may stop and help you, but overall you're on your own. Also to, uh, I think, I, I don't know if I said it already, but yeah, Montrose is a uh, pretty popular. Um, you're gonna get anywhere between like 40 to 100 riders, like each group with 730 being the least popular ride, but you still get about 40 riders. Uh, 745, you're gonna get 40 to 100. And eight o'clock, you're gonna get 40 to 100. You know, and that might be like a slight exaggeration. You know, you might get 75 riders, 40 to 75. But yeah, sometimes it's close to 100 riders out there. And as it warms up, it's gonna just get bigger and bigger. And this is all year round. Montrose ride is all year round. It's not a seasonal ride. Um, and it's been going on for, I think, close to 60 years. So yeah, it's a, it, it's, it's a monument in Southern California. It's not going anywhere. <laughs> Very recognizable any Saturday. So thank God for lights, because if the Peloton or the group would have caught that light, I would have been dropped for the rest of the day. I wouldn't have caught back up to him. Yeah, I should have cut some of this out right here, but just trying to show the ride. Like I said, I like the raw aspects of cycling. I don't like to show everything that we're just sitting there, but um, yeah, I like it raw and like people to know what they're getting into. You know, uh, there's a place for everything and there's a lot of channels that really glamorize cycling. You know, it's like someone's always sprinting at maximum watts, you know, uh, a lot of editing, a lot of music, stuff like that. And, you know, a lot of people that are new to cycling, when they get into it, they think that's what it is. <laughs> they think it's that fantasy land of, I'm gonna always be fresh. I'm gonna always have energy. You know, I'm gonna stand for this whole climb up GMR. And it's like, no, you're not. You're gonna stand for about 15 seconds, <laughs> blow your lungs out, sit down, and then you're gonna turn around. So I just like showing that, hey, this is what it is right here. Um, this is what it is to race. That's why I show all of the race. You know, I don't edit it unless it's a road race and I just don't have enough battery for it. I like to show the entire race. And I like to give the other riders in the race an opportunity to see themselves so they can critique themselves and see what they can do better, stuff like that. So definitely for all of you guys that watch my channel or subscribe to the channel, I truly do appreciate it. 
because like I said, I know sometimes the videos are boring to say the average person that's looking for entertainment. But if you're just looking for cycling content, which is what I like to provide is raw cycling content with a little bit of voiceover. Um, yeah, so sorry if you get a, you know, tired of me talking, but that's what I like. You know, this is my, this is my little social outlet. You know, I'm not really big on too many social media platforms just because I don't want to put in that time to, to do all that entertaining. But I do like sharing and I like sharing what I'm passionate about. And, you know, cycling is it right now. So here we're going through uh, the old Azusa golf course, basically. Um, it's going to be to the right. And shout out to Lizette Salas, as anybody knows her, you know, LGB, L, P, LPGA, you know, ladies professional golf. Um, she grew up here in Azusa and her dad worked at this golf course and uh, that's where she learned her skill. And it's kind of sad to see that it's kind of shut down now. I don't think it's open anymore. I don't know if they're going to sell it and put condos on it or whatever. Um, that's typically the direction a lot of golf courses are going now, just sell it and put houses on it. But uh, yeah, shout out to Lizette, just, you know, representing Azusa and actually making it to the LPGA from right here at this golf course, you know? All right, so as we turn here on Todd, just a little quick note. Um, most of the Montrose surface is pretty good. There's only, um, there's only a few areas that has a little beat up surface on it. And this is kind of one of them. Um, after we pass the train tracks here, just on the right side, there's some tree roots that come out and like a hole on the ground. Just something to be cautious of if, you, if you're new to it here. And just remember after you turn left after the golf course, the right side of the road's kind of beat up. And I just say that because it's slightly downhill and you could be getting some pretty good speed here. Um, if you're not aware of it, yeah, it, it can catch you out and don't want anyone causing a crash or anything. Other than that, most of the surface is pretty good through Montrose. Uh, the road's not too beat up, not too many potholes, anything like that. You know, another thing is, um, you know, I said the start times of each group. And when you go long, which a lot of people do not go long on the 730 time, um, I've only done 730 a couple times, but anytime that I've went long on 730, sometimes it's like four or five people going long. Um, today we had probably a good 70, 80 people in the 745. I don't know, 70 riders or so, and about 40 went long. Like half the group went long, half went short. And um, each, each time, um, start time with, you know, 15 minutes apart, when you go long, the time that's following you usually catches the earlier time at some point. So as an example, the eight o'clock group usually catches 745 at some point before the end of the ride. And for whatever reason today, eight o'clock never caught us. We actually made it all the way to Sierra Madre before anyone from eight o'clock caught us. And, you know, through my experience, depend on how fast each group is going and how the light situation works out. The uh, eight o'clock catches us, I don't know, somewhere between like the wall and uh, pretty much after the wall, maybe after Encanto Park from like Encanto Park, which we are about to approach um, through Sierra Madre. Here again, I was being a little lazy and had to go around the rider that I was trying to be lazy and draft <laughs> just to pull back up to the group here. Um, again, anytime it slows down and then there's an acceleration, yeah, that's a recipe for getting dropped if you're not paying attention and ready to hold the wheel. This is one of the benefits to Montrose though that, you know, kind of simulates racing. As you can see, that's Jack again, just, you know, practicing another attack or closing a gap. And um, yeah, this is one of the benefits, like the, 
race benefits. So one is pack riding, of course, um, just getting your bike handling skills around other people, um, kind of your awareness level, things like that. Um, number two is just holding wheels and being prepared to carry momentum and just recognize situations of when it goes from slow to fast. Um, anytime it goes from slow to fast, that's an opportunity for separation. So, and then the other is repeat efforts. Um, just getting used to a little bit other of intensity. And the key, like when you go from like a beginner and you start off riding and a lot of people, you know, think they're faster than they are or whatever the case may be. And I do not claim to be fast whatsoever. Um, I'm just out here doing me. But um, I think one of the things that people don't understand is there's a big difference of having to go hard when other people dictate the speed. You know, a lot of people can ride like pretty hard or they have a high threshold or whatever the case may be. And they think like, oh, they have a 4.0 FTP. That means I'm gonna go out and win a race. And it simply doesn't. Um, one, there's an equalizer called the draft. And a lot of people can hang out in the draft with a lower FTP like myself. I have a, my FTP is crap. You know, like I said, I'm about a 240 FTP right now. Um, I have a slightly decent sprint, nothing special, but it's kind of like my best attribute. Um, so yeah, the draft allows you to be able to hang in there with stronger people. And if you end up putting yourself in position where you're near the front at the end, then you know, you have a shot at doing something fairly good. But a lot of people ride by themselves and build up their FTP. They get pretty strong in a steady state type of riding. And then when it's time to match other people's aggression, especially multiple people, um, yeah, there's a problem sometimes. And you'll see very strong people get dropped, even in like a Cat 5 race or, you know, just finish mid-pack, even like I said, in a Cat 5 or Cat 4, and you know they're strong. Um, but yeah, that's part of it is not just managing your effort level and not being able to go hard when other people dictate the pace. So that's one thing like some of these fast group rides will uh, um, help you with is improving your ability to match other people's effort levels or to just carry more speed to where you don't have to spike your watts as much and just be smooth. Um, spiking watts is one of the biggest uh, sappers of energy that riders can do. And a lot of riders don't realize that they know that they have power and they kind of don't understand where all that power went in the during the course of a race or a ride and one of it one of those things is when you're spiking six seven eight hundred watts all the time even though it's only for a second you only have a few of those efforts in you and the more you can hold momentum and keep your speed high kind of keep your rpms high it um you know it lessens but uh it, it's it's less of an effort and when you're doing like a 400 watt acceleration opposed to a 600 watt acceleration, you know, your that that little bit of saving energy it adds up in the end. Because once your energy stores are gone, or even gets depleted, it's hard to put them back. Gels, you know, whatever else you're eating, shot blocks, all that, it's still hard to put them back. Um, especially put them back to where your body has absorbed it and can turn it into energy again. Um, and a lot of hard spikes will do that. Even if you practice it, yes, repeat efforts are trainable and things like that, but replenishing energy stores, <laughs> uh, it's a pretty hard thing to monitor, you know, in real time. And it's a pretty hard thing to do. So the smoother your efforts are, the more energy you can save. All right, so we just passed in Condo Park and I forgot the name of the street, maybe Live Oak. Um, I forgot the name of it though for sure and this is a nice spot for you to just catch a breather it's fairly fast you can just sit in the draft here catch a breather um, before uh, the Winston climb Winston is a big separator we're late into the ride now um, at this point I think you're close to 40 miles into the ride um, and Winston is for sure a leg snapper it's just a 0.2 of a mile sprint at you know six to eight percent incline um, and after that it's extremely fast downhill so it's definitely a separator if you're not going up the hill with the group and stay attached on that downhill section um, usually you're not going to catch up 
because it's fast after that rolls right into some three percent climbs going through bradbury and then it's downhill on foothill after that um and the speeds get really high on foothill before you make the right turn at the browse and then after that it's just all climbing back to sierra madre so yeah if you get separated at winston that's kind of the game over spot for you as far as seeing the front of the group again And like I said, uh, 745 is manageable. Like this is the front of the group at 745. This is the the front, and it's just a manageable speed. Right. The front of the like the front of the group at eight o'clock is a whole different beast. Um, usually, there's a breakaway that they're chasing, and just the front is a, it's just fast. I mean, honestly, it's I've never I've never finished eight o'clock long at the front of the group. And again, I'm not a fast guy but I've never finished eight o'clock long at the front of the group. Um, I've done it with the, you know, Montrose short, Montrose short, but that's not as hard of a ride. Winston is the only climb really on that part, um, even though it's still fast. But Montrose long, I've never finished uh, with the front group uh, the entire way. Cause I either get dropped on uh, Hammer Alley or Winston. The wall's not that bad cause we usually hit it with speed, but Winston, Hammer Alley, I usually get dropped on one of those two. So yeah, coming up um, before we make the right hand turn here, there's a little bit of an incline, maybe up to 3% in a second. Um, that and after you make the right hand turn, there's another little hump. Sometimes it puts a little fatigue in your leg, but at the same time, when you, if you've been sitting in right here on this downhill part, just catching a draft, it's also a little primer for your legs also, just to get some blood flowing in them so you can get ready for the sprint up Winston, if you choose to sprint. Um, like I said, we're not going that fast today, and the group doesn't really sprint up Winston. It's just kind of like a steady effort. Um, but yeah, the eight o'clock is usually a lot more intense going up Winston. And Montrose isn't the most scenic route, you know, it's through a lot of traffic, but honestly, it's, it's not bad either. You know, it's not like, uh, it's not going through like bad areas or anything like that. It's really, it's a nice route. You know, the housing areas and living areas are decent. Um, the road conditions are good. So it's not like a big scenic route or anything like that, but it's, it's nice enough. You know what I mean? And if you haven't done it before, uh, you'll definitely enjoy it, I think. And here's one of those little, you know, primers right here, a little 4% incline. Then it'll be a slight downhill or flat. And then you'll get into the Winston climb after that, which I said is like six to 8%, I believe. And again, this is 745, so the speed's not that high. And coming into this on the eight o'clock group, you'll be at least a few miles per hour faster just, you know, at the start of the climb. And if you're able to run up front, you're gonna average over 20 miles per hour up this six to 8% um, climb. I said climb, but it's really just a sprint. It is an incline but it's really just, a, like I said, 0.2 of a mile. It might even not be even 0.2, it might just be, you know, 0.1. Um, you know, it's a, for the fast people, it's a sub 40 second effort, you know, 30 something. I think the fastest people do it in mid thirties or something, I can't remember. So here, like I said, it's just a little acceleration. Um, the group doesn't do it that hard. So I just kind of sit in here behind, behind these guys and just kind of stay attached and go. But um, yeah, normally when you're going all out, it's it's just a sprint the entire way. And you can see we're over 7%, almost 500 watts. Um, I think I average four something usually up here. And today it might only been 300 and something, but it's a nice hard effort, um, usually just a steady effort. 
unless you decide to sprint it. And like I said, it's important to stay attached here um, and keep going after you get to the crest of the climb because now it's a downhill here and the speed picks up pretty good. I mean, you can hit well over 40 miles per hour here if you wanted to accelerate. There's some pretty good speed bumps here too, but they're uh, fairly smooth. They're not so sharp. You know, it's kind of the long ones, maybe like six feet long speed bumps here they are there. Um, so they're not as abrupt and you can, you know, you can carry good speed over them without having to put too much concentration on going over them. I don't put any effort here, just tuck. As you can see, pretty much everyone's just tucked. Um, there's no attacks or anything going off. And for the sake of this video, there's just one more section that I recorded. Um, and that's gonna be just like the little climbs here through Bradbury. That's why I was saying it's important to kind of stay attached to the group here, because once you make the right hand turn with that downhill being so fast, um, once you get into the right hand turn, it's only like 3%. So if somebody wants to attack, like they can still carry some really good speed through there. Um, yeah, and if you get detached, then after that, when they turn left on Foothill, it's all downhill for a little while until you get to the Ralphs. And that's pretty much all she wrote. So here's the like incline section through Bradbury. And it's pretty, like I said, it's gonna be up to maybe three, 4%, but it's also a nice little section for attacking. Eight o'clock comes through here flying. Like I said, I'm usually dropped from the front group by that time. And I'm just in like a chase group or something like a smaller group. But I do like this segment a lot. You know, you can see how you can really get some power climbs through here with a lot of speed. And this is a definitely a beautiful home community also. If you see to the left there in that Cated community, there's some really nice like homes and estates in there. Got to be careful too. Um, as you see the rider on the other side, yeah, there are cars that come down um, through there sometimes. So just got to be careful if you decide to use the entire road. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, this was Montrose 745 long, and I kind of showed like the middle of the Montrose ride. It's kind of like the second or the first part of the second half of the ride. Um, the segments were from basically from Amelia up through Winston to Foothill here. And uh, when you make the left turn here, that's Foothill. And that's pretty much all I showed. And, you know, eventually I might throw, show the Sierra Madre part. But uh, the ride's too long to show the entire ride. So anyway, thanks for watching and I'll uh, catch you guys at CBR next week.